I mean, thanks for coming here so fast and telling us this stuff, but like I said, this dragon was simply trying to kill us, and we happened to kill it first, so uh, as far as the ships go and whether we were on them or not, I mean, maybe we survived, or maybe your intelligence is bad, and you don't know as much as you think you do? Hmm. Insulting. Will not go three far. Seconds. <laughs> I said, can we go three seconds without throwing shade in the sky, me. please? Now, if you were not who I thought you were, you would all be dead. Right now. And your bodies consumed. Looks towards you, Donlin. And no god to bring you back. But this life would be your last. There would be no spirit to bring you to your afterplay. But I will tell you this. We walk the path of vengeance. We will meet and we will become allies. <laughs> if for some reason you become bound by morals and traditions, Putting yourself in favor with the Talthars. You may very well have a dragon after you. Another warning. What about option number three? We don't do any of those two. Then you will because live none of those the sound... rest of your days in peace. And you will watch as the world around you changes and a new world order is brought which favors you. And we're talking about just this universe? No. What do you mean, this universe? Hey, man, you said... Why did you shut, shut. Uh, hey, hey, no, hey, hang on, hey, hang on. Look, the dragon... No, man, I'm going to push my fucking eyeballs in right now. <laughs> no. Silence! Let the bear of Whitestone speak! Just like no. we let this other one speak, and you speak. Continue. I merely were just asking, do you mean this universe? And you want to know more? Question for a question. There are very few and far between great studies of wizardry that are able to understand, and sorcerers. Sorceress that are able to understand the complexities of the universe and the planes of existence. And are you telling me that you have a bowed from your throat just happened? Oh, this universe. As if you've never known that other universes exist. I am not an idiot. <laughs> Clarify. Brother, I know. Now. Is this a question for a question thing again? There is no question for a question now. You will tell me, where do you come from? Well, it's crazy that I had a mom and a dad, and they seem to really like each other. And I came here. See his purple and pink cackling like <laughs> begin to sprout about them in a cloud of black as they begin to hold their arms left and right. The heads of dragons begin to pull go ghastly ghost figures from their back as they begin to sprout. Holding their hands, their eyes begin to glow with the same energy. They just look towards you. I am no fool. I have traversed into other planes and times. I am eternal. See as it begins to retract from them, calling the energy back for them. I summon and control chaos. You need 
to answer me now, Bearer of the White, or your friends will know nothing of you. They will not know of you. You will not exist any longer. Do you understand me? Oh, I understand. My only question is, if I do tell you, which I will, because I mean you're threatening, but I'm just afraid, because we've ran into this problem before, we try to explain it and they don't know, but from what you gathered, you have been to other universes before? I will not answer any more questions until you clarify what you mean. Where do you come from? Well... <clears throat> I don't actually know what you would call it. It was a different universe, but universe one? I'm gonna call it universe one. And now I'm here. Roll precision check. Oh wait, I can do it up here now. Maybe if I can figure this out. In skills. Natural one. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> it's Universe not a natural one. one. <laughs> it is. It, it is. You can take a minimum of ten, but your roll is still a one. So. Yeah. You <laughs> expect me to believe Universe One. I mean, to be fair, that's literally where I would think I then came how from, were I you brought the here? That... Who brought you here? A guy with a beard. Guy with a beard. Hey, man, you can look into my soul. I'm not lying about that. Came from Universe 1, now I'm here from a guy with a beard. Then you That's are chosen. Can... The God of Order has found you. Try to enact the prophecy to bring you together. Restore order amidst the chaos. <laughs> and I was right. So does that mean you can answer my question about the universes now? Not answering answer a damn already, question. Bring, no, we said until I answer him. Bring you to this universe. The others have been lost. Or you were needed here. For I defeated the others. You have traveled again, haven't you? Not this, but the next. Bring forth into this time. Correct the errors of the forebears. That god of order. Trickster they are. Hmm. Wait, I thought you liked the God of Order. Like, didn't he give you your power Silence! or something? See them calculating. Head coming down. The God of Order has given me nothing but heartache and ruin. And I have worked diligently to reach the power that I have. And I will use it to destroy them. I owe them no favors. We are finished here. Zion. Who will return? You see them hovering. Their eyes bowing and closing. And one by one, they begin to teleport away. <laughs> Last, but not least, the Master of Dragons. You have given me much to think about. And for that, is a debt. When we meet again, dare I say soon, maybe I will pay this debt back. They teleport away. The spheres hue of purple and pink energy as it grows around them, cusping their hand and growing the air, the magic and fabric of the universe around them. And they disappear. You all are alone now. 
show off. Well, that's a lot more information than I thought. God of Order is on our side, apparently. And he cannot... Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think he mentioned that he can go in universes. But he corrects ones here, and he thinks that we get summoned here to fix what he destroyed. Right? I don't know, there's a lot going on there. All I know is he wants to kill the God of Order, and I want to kill his fire gem. So, yay, God of Order. I, it, 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 it seems to be, I think, something... So, so Damodar is trying to free magic. Doesn't like the Talthars. Doesn't like the God of Order. And the one good thing that came out of your excessive questioning, which almost got you killed, was that we now understand he harnesses chaos as his power. And we know that we have is, the God of Order on our side. And I well, didn't mention you guys. I just mentioned myself. So so here's the thing. When's the last time the God of Order helped any of us? So he may well, not be on our side, but he may be putting us in a position to be a thorn and damn it our side to buy himself time. Look, man, I'll take whatever help I can get. I don't know if, unless I find out he's the one that destroyed my universe, all I know is he brought me here while that one's being destroyed. Also, again, a god is on our side, potentially, or at least in our, wants us to somewhat succeed. Well, simply using us. Well, can, to, yes. isn't that a, to a god pretty much on our side? Hmm. It well, on the deity in question. I mean, I think there's a lot to think about here. I think uh, we got some good information. I think we maybe gave up more than we got, but that's okay. I mean, I think there's a lot to a lot to think about here. And I mean, we obviously know he's got a lot of a lot of power now. And uh, I think at least for a little bit, uh, spreading carefully could be crucial to our survival. I mean, to be fair, too, I think he's a little bit more scared about the universe thingy. So that kind of should help us, maybe. Because if he didn't think we were the chosen ones, we would have died. But Even anyway. His extensive religious studies, would Canaan know anything about the God of Order? Make a religious study. Probably not. Eleven. Um, even with eleven, you are able to uh, figure out that the God of Order actually does not have a common name. It is a title that's been placed uh, to a very olden god uh, that had a number of dealings in certain events, uh, more or less um, aid or advice to other gods. They are not one uh, to hold themselves to a domain, even though there are people who might worship them uh, they're not ones to hold themselves to a name but people might try to name themselves so we just gonna get out of here go get that axe I can get that bane hopefully well after Kanan I think you said you wanted to play with it or with the axe. You want to play with the axe, right? That really all depends on. I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> we also the have a ceremony to perform for the wolves. Oh, I do get a wolf. So we're off. We're off. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh try to find the axe and back to the village for the shaman Kanan to get a little some some and uh figure out what's next from there I guess. Oh so we're leaving the lair? I mean shall I explore? Yeah, I, nah I just get uh, out of here. I I, right. I mean it's it's melting. Not that it wouldn't take hours like he said. But um I I, I don't think it's worth staying in here personally. That's just that would be my vote is to leave. I'm sitting Let's get the fuck out of here. My taste. 
Okay. Oh. No need to move your token. As you begin to climb out of the lair, you can see the uh, campments uh, of the half giants. Uh, but now there are full giants in them. There are large, uh, hulking giants that are looking through the tents, moving through the laps or plucking them up, maybe even festering through the supplies. A number of wolves as well, smithing the ground, trying to uh, identify um, if there's anything in here. Uh, that would otherwise uh, be of use. So as you are climbing out of the tunnel uh, that fits into the void of the lair and the bit goes towards the base of the Bard Peak, you're kind of funneling up these ramparts, these bluffs that right, reach outwards, and you're kind of crawling up them and climbing up. Now that Z assisted you with it previously, or you know, maybe you're of your own uh, volition, so now you're alone, though. Z isn't with you. Um, and as you're beginning to arise, what you're noticing uh, is there is a number of bodies of the half giants, right? The lingering uh, of those that you had slain prior, now covered over with a fresh thing of snow up to the hour or so of your adventures in the lair. And additionally, there are dragonlings, the bodies of those dragonlings uh, that are also uh, out of the element and just kind of lingering around in large mass. Uh, some of the giants are kind of conversing and, and speaking. Uh, in giant uh, amongst themselves uh, and that is uh, causing a little bit uh, you know of you going oh you know are we friends are we foe at this point uh, but none of our making any motions uh, you know any any sort of movements over to you as you begin to reveal yourself from the entrenched position Do we recognize them? You recognize anybody? Yeah, do we? Like Haldun's uh, not here or... Yeah, you don't see no, Haldun, you don't see the king, you don't see Kolvog, you don't see the Susbrog, uh, you don't see any of the wolves uh, that are recognizable. They're all just kind of moving about. Uh, you see up here, you know, you are able to see one of the giants over here just kind of slowly turn and look in your general direction. Turn the head. Begins to walk over. You are not half giant. You are small legs. Hmm. We are the ones to go into the lair. Kneel down. Yes, we did just come out of there. Covered in conic bone armor. They are indeed a dragon slayer as well, but not olden born, perhaps. Ah! Oh! And you must be the reason the olden born have gone. Is this true? Yep. Nah. He did it, and he points to Lance. Oh. You must have a story to tell. Do you? I mean, we all did. We were he all just together. Had the a story to tell together, then. To not rim the hall you went. Victory to fight again. I mean... We'll just leave it at that, yeah, that's fine. There was... Effort from both us and... And your kin, the Oldenborn, in doing what happened here today. So I think we need... I think, uh... I think we go back and pay respect all those that are partying in the Hall of Thrym now. Of course. It would be a great honor to take you back. If you wish. But I must warn you, the Pact of Dim Song is completed. There might be giants that will fight for kingship. Yarls of the many clan, they will contest. This is 
the giant way. Do you mm. have a friend in Montsec I can take you to? The Susbrog. You have knowings of Susbrog. She is a dear acquaintance <laughs> of mine. Jax will just get this big, wide, shitty <laughs> grin on his on his face when that question happens. The Susbrog will look right at Kanan. <laughs> I will take you. Oceans. For other giants to come. And they begin to come over towards you with some of the wolves that accompany you. You begin to board their shoulders. They lower their hands down towards, or perhaps walking of your own. As they do this, they are and are covered with some of that draconic blood at times. Armor, the weapons, you may have lacerations, wounds, but they're otherwise fit. As you begin to board the shoulders to walk by yourself with the company of the wolves nearby, more giants kind of come too, with you, joining you in this party home. They're speaking in giant, of course. Those the ones that went into the base they went into the peak. They went into the dragons. Slayed the dragon, they did. Chosen by Thrym, they are. And a lot of them have diverse colors of perhaps their clans. They have different paints, the two-tone paints of the different clans mm -hmm. associated with them. And they're kind of bonding together over just the experience of this battle. They also begin to talk about the name of this battle has occurred here because as you begin to come outside of the valley you realize there are dozens upon dozens of these dragonlings dead hundreds of half giants killed this was a battle of a lot of other people and as they are grouping themselves together it's like these are the survivors of that battle And a lot of the old and born that might have perished were Jarls or, king, or, or kings of their own clans, right? So Jarls of, of their own. They're gone. And so they're kind of puzzled looking at each other going, we'll rule. But their bloodthirst is quenched because they've fought in this rigorous battle. They're tired. And they've, looking upon you as heroes, chosen by their god, they would not ruin you or deal you harm but giant to giant you can see you can feel there's that unknowing contest right are we going to fight in the next week you can feel that from them as you're together at the first camp of your travel after hiking out of the valley with the snow blistering and moving down now into the thick of the evergreen trees the giants around you ripping down the lumber crashing it down to light large pyres uh, of flame. Some of the giants with uh, these great bows festering out into the wilderness to try to catch some game that would be fit to feed your party uh, has grown. And as they are able to kill a couple of dire giant-sized creatures and bring them to the pyres, lighting them with flame, food will be fed. Some of them have horns of mead still left willing to share it with you over the fire and you're able to have a slight celebration of victory but still not much no one's dancing no one's jumping up and down everyone's very solemn because they're unknowing of their own future they're finding their own pockets of the two tones now that togetherness as they marched is now separated as they come to camp You all find yourselves together by nearby a pyre of wood that is burning. Slabs of meat now cooked, given to you. Horns or tankards filled. Not you, Dom. You don't need the filled. It fills itself. <laughs> um, the giants have I left. I think you. I would. I would actually try to get Kanan off by himself at some point, 
So it doesn't have to be right now, just at some point through the night, I would probably ask him to come and speak with me. <clears throat> okay. Okay, at some point, Donald, it's going to come up to you while you make your camp up here by the pyre, or the giants uh, relieve themselves in various places of their clansmen. What do you say? No. <laughs> Donald's gonna start crying, just actually like <laughs> ugly crying. <laughs> ugly crying. Ugly crying. crying. <laughs> Come on, babe. We're talking. Kane is the mean girl, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no, he'll go with you somewhere to talk. Damn, yeah, Noah's so much better. <laughs> uh, so, uh, a Canaan, um, so like, you know, I know, I know that you do the the blasty blasty with the shadow thing, and like the you're a man of Talthar or whatever the fuck Paylor, mighty Paylor. Um, so uh, I had a conversation with Thram, and I figured he'd be the best person to ask about this, and. Because you do the blasty blasty with the shadow things. What what would you know about a soul? Like you are your soul. Uh no, more like a, a dragon soul, possibly not ending up where it was supposed to end up. Supposed to end up. Yeah, so um according to Thrym, uh the, the soul didn't when we killed Ethrin. I unfortunately wasn't there to see what happened. Um, it didn't end up where it was supposed to be. Well, that so Thrym doesn't sense. have access to the magic to make more giants. He uses dragons to make giants. Yeah, so it's similar to kind of what uh, Dickhead and Cave was saying about chaos and weaving it and all that nonsense. Apparently, dragon souls are chaos energy, and he uses it to me. I didn't understand the arcane, man. Like, I'm just trying to ask, because you do the pew-pew with the, the shadow thing and the arcane. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Well, yeah, no, I have the dragon soul right here, and he's just going to hold up the staff of Tamarook. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just going to, like, his jaw's just going to drop and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> You see, the fight, as I'm sure you're aware, was not going great. And I decided to tap into the rather filthy power of this particular item. But it requires a soul, more specifically a tortured soul, to do what it does. So at the time... Honestly, we probably freed whoever was already trapped in there by summoning a demon, but um, it required a soul to replace it, and the options were limited. There was a evil, nasty dragon. There was a giant who died fighting helping us, or was about to die, and there was you who died fighting the dragon. So given my options, the dragon seemed like the most common sense choice. So we're saying we need to kill somebody for you put the soul in the staff so we can release the dragon soul. I mean, that seems like an extreme solution. For one, I suppose we could just summon another demon and that would... I don't know if it'll free the soul or destroy it. I'm not really sure how... No, 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 no. Let's not do all that. Um, better idea. You talk to your girlfriend and we see what she says about getting the dragon soul to him. She could probably figure it out. That's something that, yeah, I did not expect that the giants who hate dragons would be so upset about taking the dragon's soul after we killed it. Yeah, I guess there's this big cosmic thing called balance. Seems so okay. the giants that kill the dragons are born from the dragon essence? I don't know, man. I would call that irony. I mean, look, give and take, circle of life, all that fun jazz... I didn't yeah, expect I'm, you to have the soul. I kind of thought it was Jax with an evil eyeball thing. 
I was just no, thinking that with your pew pew, you might have seen something, you know? Okay. Is that why he talk sent to the you back? Uh, one of the reasons. Uh, there was a lot of reasons. Are you saying that in taking it? the soul of a dragon, I just saved your life? Or condemn me to be here, but it's okay. I have endless ailment. I'm, I'm happy, and I'm perfectly content. And Darwin's just going to drink from his fucking bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I want to talk about. So okay. Darwin's just going to walk back to the group, acting like nothing happened while he's just drinking. To return back to your party who's set up a camp here the actual pyre burning lots of lumber here to create some baby tents to pitch the giants feasting themselves off some of the flesh come every once in a while just to grab a, a slab of the carcass of this creature but they disappear to their groupings of the clansmen to discuss they speak to themselves Two friends. So, uh, as we return, I'm going to turn to the cannon since it's not a group conversation. What's, what's the plan with the axe? Since, you know, he said something about uniting the, 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 the peeps, the giants. Well, based on what the Seuss blogger told me, that uh, as soon as Nim's song was over, they might all just start fighting one another. They were already thinking about trying to overthrow the king. And she said that the only way they'd ever be reunited is for a particular purpose by a particular person. And then what we found out from the king was it required that particular weapon, which in a completely unrelated conversation, he offered up as a reward for killing Ethan. So my thought was rather than just have them going back to raiding and pillaging random towns all over the mountains, unite them as an army under our control to continue to kill and fight dragons considering there's a dickhead in a cave that wants to send dragons after us yeah uh, I don't know if that's gonna work um cause you see what happened is uh as I think it was how Doom told us about all the other giant clans, certain types of giants are really, really good at killing their certain type of dragon. Well, they and we just killed the white one. They may not be specialized, but they're still really big and really strong. They're probably better than an army of men fighting dragon. I mean, it depends. We can find a way to remake this. Donald's just gonna kind of like stroke the bane. I mean, there is another one. We just don't know if bringing them together will destroy the universe. I don't know if that's worth it to destroy the universe. Would be an extreme solution. I mean, that would also kill all the dragons. That is true. It would also kill Damodar if uh, Pip's theory is correct that he's stuck to this universe. What if there's more than one Damodar? This might not even be the one we set out to go after. That makes my brain hurt. <laughs> Lance, what's your thoughts? You're the science guy. <laughs> he said that I mean, makes my brain hurt. <laughs> I'm a chemist, damn it, not a multi universal physicist. What are, really what are physics? Uh, something you regularly apply to people's skulls with a, a glaive. Um, really, though, no, it's, it's, it sounded like he also can traverse time and universes and whatever. Um, it's, it's likely there's only one of him. And if we do something here might not be so kind. 
or do something to this universe. So, what happened to the one in the other universe? I don't know. I get to see. I can see Lazarus now. I work with stone. <laughs> I work with alchemy. <laughs> Just as Jackson. stumped by some of this as you. Can you ask Bal Rugar if he knows what how, how that works? Mm, yeah. I. Although I could, I, I think I'm going to hold off on that because I don't want to burn all of our favors with Bal Rugar right now. My question is, though, would that be a favor? Because he's... He tends yes. to be interested yes, in this Pip. stuff. Information Pip. as a favor. Pip, word like I I know for you where you come from work wordsmithing and telling the story may have worked to get the information you want, but we are dealing with people, creatures, whatever you want to call them that are so powerful, it's just not going to work with them, right? We need to pick our, our times, and I, I will tell you, if you want to try to call on Bal Rugar and ask him, that is up to you. I think that I would be better saved saving him to help the group in a time of need where it's, I don't know, I'm, I don't, life or death may be too extreme, but I'll just, without a lack of a, a, a better scenario life or death uh, that's what I want to save his favors for because eventually he will become uninterested in us and what we're doing and then he may turn on us so fortunately for us when we went back to High Rock he was very interested in the uh, fun house <laughs> that, that, was, that was going on uh, for whatever reason, um, if I keep on doing this, we're going to run out of favors, and I'm I mean, not willing to do that. I mean, that's fine. Your call. I didn't think it'd be a favor more so he'd be interested, too. That's a question that he would like to know, so considering you, he likes knowledge as well. That's why he's curious. But You do make me think, though. I... We don't call on Balrogar, but what if we find somebody else who might know? I mean, Damodar himself mentioned there was a couple other sorcerers, wizards that dabbled in these things. Mm. Perhaps we could find one. Uh, great Maybe example here. Who was the, if who could? Kolvog or the Susprog. Oh, the uh, Susprog might. Yeah, your old girlfriend there, Kanan. I mean, those those are fair. What about the the man with the beard? Damodar seemed to pick up on that one quite quick as well. Have you tried to communicate with him at all? How would I go about communicating with a... The only thing I have is a guy with a beard. The same way I communicated with Damodar the first time. He gave you the ring, right? Yes, and then when I tried to talk to it, I just got evil cranky pants that we just killed. Well, you just tried. Evil Cranky Pants ain't there anymore, so maybe if you focus on the man with the beard. That's all I did with the book with Bal Rugar. Or, or better, better idea. He's a god. You can pray to a god. Mm. So we think he was a, we think he was the actual god of order. I mean, that's what Damodar said. That's what Damodar suspected. Well, look. Man, it's worth a fucking shot. It, I was going to say, first off, I need Dol Dolan to roll an intelligence check to see if he actually can think of this, but we won't go there right now. Um, for But Dolan said it, Pip, like, what does it hurt? If if he's not the god of order, nothing happens. On the um, off chance he is, maybe you have something. I don't know. Let, let me go find out. He's just going to kind of walk away from the group. Find a nice quiet place, get the ring, kneel down, and kind of pray to the God of Order holding the ring, seeing if it helps him at all. You're going to pray to the God of Order? Yeah, he's just going to kind of hold the ring, bow down, sit in a quiet spot, and just 
basically say, Almighty God of Order, please give me a sign that you're there, or you can help us, or whatever your blessing may be to guide me. Pip's not very good on the religious thing, so he's just kind of copying things he's heard that people say to gods. Okay, so you hold your ring, you throw yourself to get to come devout of a prayer. Uh, most likely not versed in that regard, but you're doing your best, you're performing. Um, and as you wait a couple minutes after your prayer, holding yourself still in posture and position, a couple minutes, nothing happens. There's no voice within your head, no voice, the breaking of the heavens, or anything that would uh, astound to it a miracle by any means. And as you wait even further, still nothing. Yep, yep, and I feel stupid. So she's going to get up and walk back to the group. Nada. Insight I mean, check. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Did you expect the <laughs> first one to work? That's not yeah. how gods work. I don't know how gods work. Do I look like I'm a religious guy? <laughs> All right, look, look, look. Okay, let me, let me explain some things to you, okay? I was fighting at a goddamn coliseum for the last however many years. Before all this shit happened, okay? So them didn't talk to my ass once. Until I died. So, you know, it may take some time. Are you suggesting he dies to talk to the god of order? Oh, we could definitely try I mean, that. If, if we're going that not. route, I do owe him one for the giant room. I'm just saying, like, you know, <laughs> it's a thing. But no, that wasn't what I was... I was suggesting to keep trying. That's all I'm saying. God's required time and effort before they reward you. It, did you follow a different god, Pip, back on your original universe? Or in your original universe? No, no, not not the most religious. I mean, I've heard of gods in my other universe, I guess. Same as here, but I never spoke with one in any of my adventures. I mean, or anything. Heard mm. a lot about them, just never went one-on-one -on -one or spoke with them, and then uh, gods didn't seem to really weren't my thing, kind of speak. A lot of rules, a lot of me and my friends kind of just like to I guess Malachi could have been more religious, but he never really spoke about it. I, I mean, look, all, I, I guess my point is i not necessarily following a god per se in Balrugar, but I, I never had this affiliation with any, I don't know, powerful beings, if you will. You, for some reason, were chosen by somebody, god right hand to a god, somebody, to save you from that universe imploding. It might, like Donlin said, it might be worth several attempts to try to talk to, pray to, get in contact with that individual who might have more information about Damodar. I am telling you right now, it seems like Damodar has been all over the place. Universes, times, worlds, chaos. I mean, the dude summoned, I forget how many, but all kinds of fucking dragons behind him when he's about ready to disintegrate you. Yeah, but didn't he say he's only in this universe? Never died, walks by the way. We never got clarification on that. He just said that he went through different times and shit, which if he went through different times... You know, you, look, man, this makes my head hurt. This is this this is string theory. There's this smart smart playwright that I heard about that called uh, Einstein that wrote some shit about this. Uh, beyond my understanding, um, that's great. Fucking what does this group come to when Donlin's the one <laughs> quoting Einstein to us? <laughs> Don't know this Einstein of whom you refer. <laughs> Well, I'm, s I'm surprised he was a famous dwarf. <laughs> uh, so I'll say this. Is he a dwarf? We... I thought he was I, no. small. I am not okay with drawing a line between dwarves and Germans. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, was he Austrian? <laughs> yeah. If anything, yeah. he's from Menzo Baranzen. <laughs> yeah, then we gotta, we gotta make a disclaimer on that one. 
dwarves are <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, look, Germans are not bad. Okay, we're not. We're okay. Yes, so we're, done. we're done. We're done. We're moving on. We're, done. we're moving on. <laughs> All right, so our conversation has brought us to a little bit of uh, complexity. We are definitely have our heads in the clouds. We're thinking, which is good, but we're also not coming to some conclusion. And you're never going to do it. You're never going to wrap your heads around it because you just don't have all the information. What Damon mm -hmm. and Master of Dragons has provided for you, though, um, is kind of a, is is more than what you are owed. To be quite to be quite honest with you, um, which does stand out as a reason, perhaps, uh, of cooperation. You know, there seems to be that there is something going on there uh, that they'd be willing to cooperate with you. You said something about being allies in the future that you, that would be necessary or something along those lines. Um, and so all of that's kind of brought together. Uh, so as the night progresses, food is in your bellies, ale, mead, right, is in your hand. You're drinking, you're speaking of these things. The giants are not pushing against each other, they're not fighting just kind of holding themselves into their own little groups eventually those fires begin to dwindle and they're kind of falling themselves to sleep or those providing a uh, watch so no watch is necessary for the night and you all creating lean-tos or setting up your tents right getting warm shelters in place by this pyre begin to find yourselves in your own uh, spaces for rest uh, after the conversation and uh, kind of uh, brought to uh, kind of a stalemate is there anything anybody wishes to discuss further, or do we push push on ahead? Just one one question before we push on ahead. Does it seem like the giants are segregating themselves into like clan specific? That's correct. Yep, they're kind of finding okay. themselves in the foray, right? They might have been lost away from the others, and so they're like, oh hey, yeah, yeah, I, you know. And they're not they're not on like a, a a friendship basis per se, but they recognize the two tone colors and going, you know what? We're clans. We're clansmen. We're together in this, right? We're together in this, uh, and we will find ourselves together. And it's not that they're making any moves against others, but they're kind of, uh, what's the word to say? They're falling into their former ways. And you're Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of what the Giants said to us about potential fighting for who's going to take charge. And uh, just wanted to see if they were aligning themselves with their own clans. That may not be to anything now, but, you I know, think... tomorrow morning, the next day could... You know, yeah. I think after speaking with Donlin and whatever other conversation we had, uh, Kanan would spend the rest of the night going from group to group of giants, trying to mm -hmm. learn about which jarls they're under, and like a little bit about like the geopolitical situation, and like put some names to faces for each faction. Okay. Try to figure it out. Okay. I would. Uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I'd say the only other thing that I would do that night is go off to the side, pull out the tome, kind of talk to Balrugar. Nothing that I'd expect him to respond to. Just let him know that we slayed Ethrin. We met Damodar. A bunch of his spawn, it seemed like, were there. Um, nothing bad happened, but, uh, you know, we're, uh, we, we were warned to stop doing what we were doing, essentially. Okay. All right. So, given both of those things, is anybody else wanting to do anything for the night? Uh, I, I would be seeking out uh, the Gunnarok clan, or the, the giants that followed the Jarl Gunnarok. Um, just because the Gorgald is some... I can spend a little bit of time with them. But they're the only ones that I know personally and care enough about. Is that the one that got killed by Aetherin the first time? Yeah, that was yeah. the one that, that... He was my friend. He was your friend. He was my friend. I take it none of the giants I drank with are with us, right? No. The fuck ups? Yeah. Yeah. No, they're not here. They're not here. Break the breakfast that club. Was of the a chance. Breakfast club. <laughs> he, he went right to the fuck ups. The fuck ups. Bro, the Jesus. breakfast club. They is might in not the even have game. Who knows? You don't even know. They might not Making even have They didn't wake up in time and miss the fucking. <laughs> They missed the yeah, fight, they overslept. Man. They yeah. missed it. Okay. But hey, at least you know they're all still alive. Uh, so given that, just getting the docket, I'll have the information. Uh, it seems like we might just be able to, you know, third third person that we don't need to go into the details unless there's specific things that you wish to find. Nope. Nope. 
uh, we're gonna go to break then. So we're gonna take a, a 10 minute break so we come back with the information ready to go. We'll get the get going on that uh, in terms of the game and everything. So if you're watching the stream, thanks so much, really appreciate it. Uh, we'll take a 10 minute break or so, so at 7.30 p.m. PDT, we'll be back. Uh, thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it, and see you in a bit. Bye. Bye, Bye. Trent.
All right, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. We took a, a longer break there to kind of bring our minds together, come back together. Um, so as we are resting here, I'm going to advance the, uh, the time, uh, get us to the next day. You're more than all welcome to take a long rest here. So you're able to find yourselves in uh, your various, again, tents, lean-tos. However, bed rolls laid out. The funeral pyre is dying down, but there's plenty of wood to be consumed with these evergreen trees that have been kind of thrown on, these large hulking logs from the giants. You're able to uh, find rest and warmth from that fire. Some of you immune or resistant to the cold or uh, surviving a little bit more, uh, or sorry, sleeping a little bit more, maybe more soundly. Uh, information wise, so before we had a rest, right, Kane and you went around just conversing uh, and uh, kind of going through some of the different groups of the giants that have found themselves just to figure out, you know, who are the Jarls, who are the clans, that sort of information, where are we walking into? All I need from you is a flat charisma check because this is actually going to define how much information I give you. All right. Sweet, sweet lord. Okay. He's very pretty. No. Very persuasive. Laying with the <laughs> Seuss broad goes a long ways. Kiss and never tell. <laughs> um, so when I put post in chat, this information regardless of your role. Uh, these are the Jarls uh, that would be responsible for the clans. And they're not the Jarls that are currently responsible for the clans. They are the Jarls that would be put in power after a moment like this. I'm not going to give you the names of the previous Jarls. That's completely redundant now. These are the Jarls that would be in place. They're either uh, sons, daughters um, that are not old and born, uh, that would be uh, here to uh, take the reign of, uh, of the Jarlship. They, all might, they also might be dragon hunters of, of esteem, value, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, with your charisma check of 21, one information you're able to get is that there's one particular Jarl that stands about the rest. That's Jarl Lagatha of, of Clan Sudbrug. Uh, that's why I put them last on the, on the list there. They are uh, the daughter of an, of an olden born uh, that has been reinvigorated. Their clan itself is actually the most survival of the, of the conflict. Uh, and they're most likely to try to take that kingship if they were to do that. Um, not that they are going to. So I think it's important is that the conversation of these giants is really questions, right? They're just questioning everything. They're questioning, right? Jarl Lagatha will take the helm for sure, right? Are they going to take, are they going to try to bring all of the clans together again? Like Queen Grimar did. Will we there need another pack to fight? Will we raid this summer, right? We all going to be bonded together on the long ships to go raid. So these are all like, Questions of questions of questions, right? So you're kind of nitpicking and how your charisma rolls through uh, is able to yield you that that uh, that particular Jarl of that Earl is going to be uh, someone of value if there was a conflict to arise. They were most likely to arise uh, and, and cause something of concern. Um, the new Domlin, you're actually spending uh, time with a, a grouping of giants. You speak to a giant Esog of clan uh, Gunsen, which is the uh, particular clan of the one who had fallen, the Jarl Gunnarok. Uh, and from there, you're able to uh, have a pleasant conversation about anything in particular. Raise the, uh, the arms. Uh, no, just kind of bonding over the, the battle. Just drinking, hanging out, having a good time. Yeah. Bonding over the battle. Speaking of various accounts, right? Drinking ale mead right from the horns having a good time right none of them are questioning your victory in fact they just want to know more about it how did you slay the dragon how did you bring it down what was its horde like what did you loot were the spoils of victory and in that conversation yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No good. Uh, I was probably going to say I probably won't talk too much about the horde, seeing as how it's Donlin. He does about the treasure. Yeah, but yeah, not about treasure, more honor, glory. At the end of the conversation, the giant Esog of Glen Gunson looks towards you. This is right. Put their name down. Looks towards you. If there was a fight to come, 
amongst the clans. Will you join us? Will your party join us? It looks you directly to your eyes. Um, if, it, if there's a, a battle, we're going to try to prevent that. There don't need to be no more bloodshed. You guys lost a lot of people. I don't have a better answer for you. I'm sorry. We did lose a lot. A lot of strong, honorable giants. Halls of Thrym, they go for the everlasting life. We do not. But Gunson, to wish more war amongst our people. We look to the summer raids far off this land. Village. But before, bear more children. Then Gunson will most likely begin to chime. Find ourselves into the mountains away from Monsac. I cannot speak to the other clans. And if a new king was to be like presented to you or a new leader without bloodshed, do you think the clan would be open to it if they were a worthy recipient of the title? It is possible. Yalguna Rock. They are 31st born. Taking the name of the father might seek reason for peace. If a king was to arise that was suitable for heir, they would be willing to follow. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, as I said, we're going to try to prevent war. So, uh, you know, like, I don't want any more of y'all to die. I do hope you guys get, you know, lots of babies. You guys are nice people in this clan. You guys deserve all the offspring. Thank you. Your words speak with wisdom. Are you sure you're not old and born? No, I, my party keeps calling me dumb. I don't know what that's all about, but dumb. Well, you I are just, far from I dumb. I just swing a sword. There is an art to swing your sword, like any weapon. I appreciate your time drinking with me and the insight into your clan. Of course. More than welcome to join me in the hearth of the fire. And all of us here points to the two dozen worth of giants in this clan that have formed themselves together. I'm sure we will meet Guna Rock when we return to Monsag. They will be seeking eager of all of us to reunite and then move forth. I will put in a good word to you, Donwood, and your party. I would appreciate that. I think we might... I need to talk to my party, but I think we might want to call a, Yarl, a meeting of the Jarls before, before any of the bloodshed happens, see if we can help out before we leave. Hmm. Well, if you stay that long, I'm sure bloodshed will not happen for many weeks. It takes a while for us giant. To find a reason to hate each other. They giggle and laugh as they cheers. <laughs> as long as there's meat and there's food, that's all you need, right? Aye. That is and more dragons. Hmm. Do you know of any more? Uh, not any frost dragons. Uh, I know that I intend to march south at some point and fight with the Playing Warsaw Giants and the Red Dragon. They kind of dishonored Thrym and kind of assholes. They dishonored Thrym. And they deserve to die. 
Speaking of, how would you guys feel about fighting dragons that aren't frost dragons? We are giant. We fight dragons. We might not be keen to fight other dragons who do not breathe frost and cold. But nonetheless, we will follow in the laws of Thrym, and we will fight to the death. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm happy to hear that. We may actually have a solution for you guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to go join my party, uh, see what they learned, who they talked to, and what they did, because my party's... There's this one in particular he talks to much. And this other one's got sticky hands, so like I have to watch him too. Mm -hmm. Sticky, as <laughs> are they a milker of bees? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so like, you know, a golden coin uh, on a smalling is usually carried in like our pockets. He likes to stick his hands in people's pockets, and the gold seems to stick to his hands. It's this weird magic trick that he does. His hand goes into pockets and sticks to gold. Yes. Well, let them not find themselves in the hands of a giant's pocket. Big pockets. You guys have pockets on us? Huh? Some of us have pockets, yes. You have a pocket? Points to another giant. Yep. <laughs> you have a coin? Those have a large piece of coin. That was a big coin. I'm impressed. What kind of coin do you think giants hold in their pockets, if not giant? Is there a sack of manhole covers around his waist? <laughs> I, I didn't think that you guys made your own coins, so like I thought you raided and took gold from Smalling. So like, well, of course, we have many Smallings, more, treasures, thanks. and coin. It is... Most of our loot. But sometimes we smelt down. Make big giant coin. I respect it. I like the logic. Is Don is just like very curiously looking at the coin. No, there's nothing else that nothing I have for you. Just staring at the coin. <laughs> that coin's amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> Set from the heavens. Oh, I just, I mean, I'm just imagining this like coin. Two to three times the size of Dawn. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like imagining this this giant like dropping the coin on top of you. And it just kills him. <laughs> Out of curiosity, would that coin be worth more than normal coin? Yeah, of course. It's so big. Well, it's yeah, all it would the be like maybe. the weight of like ten thousand coins. <laughs> it's got to well, be the I mean, weight of like, ten thousand coins. So, would it our like our coin be worth less to them because of that? Yeah, they already make the difference between a giant coin and a small coin. So, if you account for the the difference of weight, they most likely would speak to you in the coinage of a smalling versus them coinage of a giant. But Donlin is absolutely correct. Coin is coin, and they're not going to do more work to smelt coin down unless it's necessary. This is more along the lines of extra curricular things that they they do right and all their prices are just like coin. it's point zero 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 one it's, just, <laughs> it's like bitcoin basically this exchange bitcoin. rate sucks <laughs> yeah. i know that's what i was thinking i was like no wonder everything's expensive here <laughs> damn all right. things are pretty cheap here what do you mean yeah things are super cheap um okay so is there anything else on them that you Uh, no, I would probably just relay all of that information to, um, what's his name? Um, Kanan at some point. Wow. What's wow. his name? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what's his name? You know, that fucker. Very ironic, though, that Kanan <laughs> hasn't got called out yet for having a soul of a dragon in his staff, but I get called out for having sticky hands. <laughs> I don't want to upset Kanan until we have the soul free, and then I can give him more shit about that. <laughs> Can't, I call him child murderer all the time. I mean, okay, that's fair. I would say, I don't have anything else, but, but those of you who got new magical items might want to spend some time figuring out what the fuck they do. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Did I actually have to wait for the... Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Do I have time to... The... Sorry, go ahead, Pip. No, I thought we were waiting for the shoe sprog to tell us what they do. Well, she can, but I mean, I think if you just, like, spend the night, Study it. you can figure out most of it. Study it a little bit? Huh. Yeah, so if I have extra so, yeah. time from talking about Rugar, I, I will... I think I got the wand, wasn't it? That's what we said? Yeah. yeah. I'll take a little time with the wand and figure out what, what the wand does. Yeah, so this is... We'll uh give the dwarf bolt to play it in. Thank you. Yeah, so this is why I need to know who's going to have what, because when we go through a long rest, you're actually yeah. able to identify an item's problems. Um, this is... Uh, we're we're going to narratively, because usually this is through attunement, right? You're tuning, so you're understanding an item. This is more or less just understanding magical properties by, uh, you know, a, a more means of a... Uh, not attunement, per se, but just, like, researching it, learning it, right? Even though we're not tuning to an item, a magical item still has the essence of whatever created it, whatever person had put their magic into the item, and that speaks to you. Even though you're not going to tune to an item, it still speaks to you. And so we're still going to follow along the lines of resting with it, and that's able to identify it. Especially with this party, since you don't have anybody with the identifies. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Um, no, you so, figure that out. What's all you? Okay, so I need to know who has who's identifying. All right, so David, you're going to identify what? The crown and the armor. I figure keep them together. They're both of dwarvish provenance. Okay. Figure out what's going on there. So David, you are going to do the crown. Yes. Okay, and then we'll start with it. Uh, but this is a ring of animal influence. Nice. Yeah. You're going to drag it into your inventory. For romancing bears. Just realized, this is Pip's third ring. So he's just like getting decked out with like the infinity gauntlet of rings over here. We can only have two rings equipped to one time. Well, one of them is actually a stone. So I don't think it's not. Uh -huh. I thought maybe had another way, but I miss getting picked up in my Okay, so okay. Um, this is a, uh, a rare item. Uh, the ring has three charges, regains 1d3 a daily uh, at dawn per day. Uh, while wearing the ring, you gain, use, uh, you gain uh, use of an action to expend one of its charges to cast one of the following spells. Animal friendship, fear, and speak with animals. Simple as that. This uh, item is a magical item. I think I've configured it properly. So if you do equip it, uh, it will put the spells into your spell uh, vocabulary. Uh, at the very bottom of your spell list, it will show up on your HUD. I seize it. Dax, you with the, uh, the wand here? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a wand of winter. Wand has seven charges, which are used to fuel the spells within it. In the hand, uh, while in the hand, you can use your action to cast one of the following spells: Ray of Frost, Sleet Storm, and Ice Storm. Wand nice. regains one d six plus one expended charges each day at dawn. You expend the wand's last charge. Uh, you will roll a d20. On a 20, the wand melts away. Forever destroyed. They're all good. Uh, I do yeah. need to do some work to the item. Uh, an important item. It's not configured properly, so I won't drag it into your... Um, you love it to configure it. Yep. What was the third spell? I missed that. Uh, the third spell is Ice Storm. So each of them are going to you're going to use a specific charge, right? So an Ice Storm will use four charges. Um, the Sleet Storm will use three charges. Uh, so 
uh, very powerful uh, wand here. The, the, so, very helpful. Uh, the David, which uh, which one item are you spending with first? You're gonna be. Uh, let's go with the crown first, since it's more likely that I would end up keeping that one of the two. Okay. Uh, so this is the crown of Alderfist. It's a legendary item. It's a regal golden crown with three spikes filled with rubies and sapphires. Dwarven runes speak of previous rulers, the Alderfist clan. While wearing the crown, you have resistance to non-magical physical damage. You have advantage on charm and charm-like saving throws. And you can use a bonus action to inspire allies within 60 feet, giving them a d6 to use as a ability check, attack, roll, or saving throw. And the feature uses one charge, and the crown has three charges. It recovers 1d3 charges per day. Okay. Um. Got it. Your brain destroyed. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, hello. As I heard legendary, and I was like, wait, hold up. Oh, wait a minute. Tell me right. Uh, anyway, continue. The art. That, that's it. I mean, that's that's the crowd. So yeah. it's uh, it has a bardic inspiration feature to it. Uh, it has the advantage. Uh, charm and charm like, so like dominate spells with charm. Him not pattern, right? You'll have advantage. Um, and then you have the resistance to non-magical physical damage, which uh, is pretty, pretty great. Yeah, armor of invulnerability, basically. And it just takes a helm slot because it's it's a ground. Okay. And what about the armor? Uh, so if you're gonna do the armor, uh, you only rested one time. So. Uh, so it takes an hour time. to attune. I'll let to you them. take. Could yeah, I'll let you take an hour. Yeah, for sure. So, I'll let you take the hour and just kind of sped up a little bit longer in the night. That's fine. Um, yeah. The armor is. You sleep uh, for six. You're up for two. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's what I figured. So, uh, the armor itself uh, is dwarven plate. So while wearing the armor, you gain plus two bonus to armor class. So eighteen plus two. Uh, in addition, to effect moves against your wall or against the ground. You can use your reaction to reduce the distance you were moved up to ten feet. Um, and again, it is plate armor, uh, so it does have uh, specific requirements for efficiency. It is a very rare. Yeah. Very strong, both of them. Um, oh, yeah, well, there's is. there's no way to disconnect the some of the armor to turn, make it half plates, so that'll have to go to somebody else. However, I feel like also that resistance to non-magical BPS would be much better on somebody else. So, in name of good faith and party dynamics, uh, who would like some of these items? I have zero use for them. What was the other? I heard the resistance on the crown and the advantage on saving throws. What was the other thing? Uh, bonus action, one d six to basically bardic inspiration three times a day. Hmm. Add a d six. So if you don't so use becoming, bonus action a lot, so it wouldn't really me having it doesn't make sense. If anybody or someone else had it in case I go down, they can have some type of bardic inspiration. Well, that, and it's not actually Bardic Inspiration, so it would stack with yours if we used them together. If you had it, you used your bonus action for one or the other, so they... You couldn't do both. You get the yeah. action con action But if someone con else con had it, they could use their bonus and stack it with mine, so it'd be yeah, better if someone else had it, is what I'm trying to say. Yes. yes. Me having it wouldn't yeah. do anything. As much as a dwarf would like to have the dwarven stuff, gotta think about those. Uh, and then the plate armor is... Plus two plates, then you can yeah, avoid being removed. So that's better yeah, than the stuff we got from the dwarves. That's all I got was dark steel, which is just a plus one. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, he's the only one looking right plate anyway. So that, yeah, yeah. That's looking at yeah. Someday I might take uh, heavy armor. Proficiency. Heavy armor. Yeah, heavy armor proficiency feat. Mastery or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but I think. Lance, if you want the crown, I don't think... I mean, it would still work with Lance. I mean, be able to have it. What? I mean, my bonus actions are done... I, I do other things with them, so it wouldn't benefit me. What do you, Lance, what do you use your bonus actions for? Uh, occasionally, either the Poisoner feat or uh, Commander's Strike to have somebody right. else attack. 
Oh, that is a good point. Who doesn't use bonus actions that much? Because that is a good point. I'm talking um, about it. <laughs> I, I don't much. Actually, do I have any bonus actions? If you're going to play that melee build, that actually might be good on you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to start playing more melee heavy. We're going to give the righteous guy a crown now. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By Paylor's Light. <laughs> well, that means I can give Pip my Dragon Helm. Yeah, we all have Dragon Helm, so you'd have to give that up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have one of those. Forgot about G that. Giving the pastor a crown so much for separation is ch church and state. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, again, Talthars, hello. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're about to upset all your Talthar buddies. Yeah. Why are you wearing yeah. a crown? Yeah. They don't know where I'm from. You better come with a good fucking lie. You know, I had um, a whole backstory, and then we deleted a damn universe. And Confessor does not wear a crown, I'm just saying. Depends on who you're confessing. Uh, do they, they, or do they wear a crown? New universe, new rules. <laughs> That's I not mean, how I don't, that works. I think it's kind of down to you, Kane, and either you can use it or it's not not of use to the party at this point, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, I could yeah. use it. But I, I mean, I want to say get rid of it. I mean, definitely one of y'all need to wear. It. Yeah, yeah I, no, I'd say it's either it's either me or Kanan at this point. Yeah, no, I, yeah, Kanan can wear it. Like I said, he doesn't. He literally doesn't have any bonus actions. I don't think. Yeah, send it. All right, ground yours. Really not. I mean, I'm I'm just assuming no one else wanted it. But does anyone actually want that? Because I know Donla and your character does look like animals and stuff. So would you actually want? No, no, you're fine. No, I'm that. about to go get a fucking wolf, dude. Okay, I'm I just making I'm sure because I, I do I know Donlin uh, likes getting animals to die for. I mean, be his companion. <laughs> I did. I did create the one in winter. I had to change it to a one in a twenty. It will be able to melt away, uh, but it will do the upscaling. It's a magical item, so once you equip it, it will show those spells. Uh, it is in your inventory, Jax. The crown and the armor in your inventory lands, since you were the one to position and identified them. You can open a trade uh, window if you want to trade those items. Uh, yeah, I'll just they are set it. up uh, uh, to work. <clears throat> just know that we are on equipment slot based. It's on the crafting guide. Uh, so you have a helm slot, right? So you cannot stack helm uh, type items. Uh, helms involve helmets, or circlets, crowns, that sort of thing. Um, and this is uh, just doing away with the attunement uh, slots to allow you to equip more magical items but also diversifying a little bit uh, narratively in terms of how you look and present with some of the enchantments. A lot of the enchantments in the game are actually uh, uh, able to be put on the crafting guide, are able to be put on a variety of items. So you can actually say, I want this, I want that, with this. These are unique D&D 5e items, uh, actually one of which is a homebrew item. Um, and so they are unique. You can't craft them, uh, but they will still fill that equipment slot. So. With this crown, that's a helmet, right? Uh, with the wand, that technically, if you equip it, it takes up a hand slot, right? Because you're holding it kind of to pull it out uh, mm -hmm. to use it. The armor, armor, right? Self-explanatory. So y'all mentioned that for rings, you can only have two equipped, right? Is that what I just heard? Yeah, so two rings, one cloak, that sort of thing. And so, and we're not counting my, and you said not counting the stone as an actual ring this, slot. Yeah, right? so the stone does not require an equipment slot. That is a campaign okay. item uh, that will never require a slot uh, to be. Uh, so remind me again, where is the button to initiate a trade? Far bottom left in the user panel. So the user panel, you should see Game Master, Adam, David, Deuce, right? In, uh, below that, there should be a trade button. Ah, uh, yep, there it is. The Thank previous, you. yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, the previous trade module we had uh, is no longer being supported. So we had 5e yeah, trade. Right, right. It's It's no longer, yeah. So that was what you could do in the character sheet, which was... Perfection. <laughs> it's yeah, no longer. So I'm not, I'm not gonna lie here. Like I prefer to keep my hands 
free. Although equipping this would is that is equipping the, the wand considered a free action in combat? No. So um, equipping is uh, something that has to be done outside of combat. Uh, it's essentially okay. kind of equipping things and then going into the combat. There is a time to equip something, and in that time, it's you know, like one minute, right? So like, it's not really feasible yeah. to do while you're in the, the phase yeah. of combat. So I, I mean, I prefer to have all my hands free in in the in the combat. So like, I I will probably not equip this wand if somebody yeah. would prefer to have it and be equipped i'm more than willing to hand it over to somebody well, don't have to decide now counts as one of the you weapons one. you can pull out so like if you have that your daggers and then your grenades equipped that's your yeah, three home slots I'm, I'm looking at your inventory and right now all you have equipped to your hands is your dagger you have two other slots to equip for your hands. Well, okay, so you that's a total of three so, spots for your hands. So sometimes I have the two daggers because if I was close enough and I didn't hit the first attack, I would attack again. I don't know if that was considered two okay. hands or one. So two daggers, two hand slots. Then you have one more left. And and then uh, I don't know for my fast hands if pulling out no. the grenade. So okay. uh, ammunition uh, or grenades. So we can talk about that. So ammunition, grenades. If you're going to be using those. That means you need to have your belt slot for a quiver or a case, right? Because you have to pull them from somewhere. Uh, and so that is sufficing for it. So uh, right now you actually don't have a belt slot equipped. Uh, and so, you know, we come down to it. If you get grenades, I'm just going to throw a case item into your inventory. And that's kind of your belt, right? Where you're pulling your grenades, your satchel, right? Where you're pulling your grenades out. Uh, that does not count for your hands. So you actually can use the wand. That could be your third slot. Uh, you can still use your grenades. Okay. I mean, I guess I'll hold on to it for now as a temporary holding spot. If somebody else desires it, wants it, thinks they can use it better, by all means, uh, just let me know. I'm just waiting for you to figure out how to sneak attack with a, a ray of frost. That would be dope. Some Pathfinder shit right there. And you do I just want to see stab something in the eye with a fucking... Yeah, you get sneak attacks with spell attack rolls. Really? In Pathfinder. Yeah. It but they, okay, well. but that's a Pathfinder, not a 5e thing. No, not 5e. Well, why yeah. not? Yeah, no. That's... Why not? <laughs> you start giving this man fucking sneak attack on his Eldritch Blast? God, dude, that would, that would be, be so great. That dope. would be... I, I, wait, hold on. Hold well, on. That sneak attack is still only once per turn. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, only it's once, once per turn. Per turn. Yeah. Correct. Technically, you get the... Yeah, I mean... You get like, It'd what? be about three? the same damage he does anyway. <laughs> yeah. I think the issue is because cantrips upscale with, uh, with levels, right? So... That would be... Yeah. You, now it would be fine. Yeah. Now it would be fine, but you think about Look, higher levels with firing off all those blasts. I mean, it yeah. would be no only more broken. Still only get, you still only, only get the ones one. yeah. and one. It would be go, no yeah. more broken people using crossbow stuff these days, right? Yeah, it's no it's no cheesier than the crossbow <laughs> master build, honestly. The crossbow master build. Uh, you know, I'm going to take into consideration masters. that is uh, one more to the docket of changes. Uh, of, uh, You're I've, welcome, uh, Jax. Hell yeah. yeah. Throwable, throwable <laughs> up, is on the dock. I mean, I, now I got, now I got this. So you know, it's. Couple, I just want people to realize I, I went from too. picking up, I went from picking up every single arrow that I shot, to picking up every single dagger that I shot, to now Eldridge Blast, which I don't have to pick up at all. So right. I just want to point mm -hmm. that out. <laughs> so picking, picking up shit. Stop picking up shit. I have five stone sling bullets to my name. I need to buy another <laughs> pack of pack of bullets. A pack of rocks. <laughs> Pack of bullets, baby. Don't you not just go find them? Head down to Big Five Sporting Goods. Buy me a pack of bullets. Uh, so not listed yeah, in the not listed in the crafting guide, easy. but you can use uh, two chaos salt to make uh, ammunition. So because it's a permanent item, technically in terms of its usage, uh, so you can use mundane that for... sling bullets. Invaluable item we just got from a adult dragon. Mm, yeah, mm. buy them. That I. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Ironically, I need a town to get to because I have plans for some of that stuff if the group will allow it. So, send it. Well, I gotta wait till we get to a town. Until then, it doesn't matter. So, all right. So gotta... we've rested. 
we've exchanged items. We've identified the items uh, through our uh, knowledge. These items bear the ancestors who have created them prior. Uh, they speak to at a variety of rate, like I had say, the ring of animal influence, that gray bear fueled with the spirits of different animals, right, that have enchanted it. Uh, the dwarven plate and the crown uh, gifted and handed down by ancestor of dwarvish king of clan Alderfist. The wand of winter, right, has uh, some sort of ethereal sort of uh, thing. And based on knowledge as well, Jax, it actually has giant ancestry with its creation, something the Seuss Brog might more know more about. Uh, you know, might even been a Seuss Brog who created that item uh, long ago. So. We need wolves. Apparently. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's coming. Um, this pack of people that you are working with, these giants, uh, you are not moving at a quickened pace as you did before. They are taking their leisurely time, right? So they are hunting for food. They're taking time. Uh, and so we will go through another night of travel. Uh, we will be arriving roughly in the afternoon of the next day, which is the 11th of Ron. Technically, it's a weird, so Wednesday. Uh, and that will push us uh, back into Monsag. I think one of the first things we should do, guys, buy potions. That seems like a good idea. We got a lot of money. No, that, that shit passed. I'm already over you guys. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, we're over potions. Them <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now we learned our lesson. Man, it's buy like, I died, now potions. you want to buy some fucking potions. Right? <laughs> like, I brought it up like four times. Like, we should buy these now. Okay. I could have sworn we did, but... The best part was Lance when we were describing this. He's like, "No, I ran right past you to Pip because because I knew he could heal people if he had spells left." <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Look, I, I had to pick between two dying people, so excuse me for flipping a coin. And, and, and in fairness, Donlin always he said he's point. willing to die fighting a dragon for Thrym. He uh, honestly. Sure, we've done as well. We've heard of this a number of times. Sure. I mean, I should have gave it to you, dude, so you can roll new character, but you know. <laughs> ah, that's really all it was. I really thought you were really going to. Are you so, kidding me? How much you served your god? Are you serious right now? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you're the literally the you're more devoted than clerics I've had of DM for. Like, <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> no way would your god like allow you not to suffice whatever it is you wanted to this plane of existence for drinking for eternal life. Are you serious? Yeah, no. You're way more devoted. In, in 19 sessions worth of time, too. Yeah. Way more than some of the clerics. In like 50 sessions worth of time. Um, so, yeah, so I think we have three things in Monsag, by the way, we need to do is one, we need to go see the blacksmith guy. I forget who it is, but about the axe, right? Kolvog, yeah. Uh, we need to see uh, what's her face. I'm gonna. I hate Susprog, yeah. And I think Pip is still right, though. I think we probably need to go see what, if any, potions, healing potions they have, so we can save Lance some time. We have way more than enough. I mean, we got thirty-two thousand silver pieces. We kind of need to get rid of, right? So there's we have more. Go ahead. There's just a store. You can just buy it. Like there's just a store window right there. Yeah, I'm already yeah, at so it. I, so I think. Oh, yeah. Good point. Are you are you purchasing them with uh, the? Yeah, gold? I don't. No, I was just gonna purchase some with my what, gold. Do we want to use? Just take it out of the party. And just buy all of them and then. Put them okay, the and then divvy them out. Yeah. You want to know what that's, the, that's what I suggested we do earlier is just buy them all with the company yeah. gold and then they don't do the no, I, So how do I use the money that the so I'm at the oh. screen. How do I use the um if I just hit purchase? Would that take it out you'll of the money? You'll have to add it from the group so you'll have to subtract it and do the math before you. So you'll so need twelve hundred and fifty gold. Yeah, yeah. There you go. 
And well, uh, just take twelve hundred and fifty gold out of the, the group and put it in yours and get purchased. Okay. Lance, just curious for you, is there anything uh and, and for the rest of the group for that matter too, is there anything purchasable here that we need to pick up for crafting I'm items? Changing the prices of these uh We've gone through the other whoa, 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 whoa. Inflation does not happen in this world, sir. No, <laughs> bro, the prices are decreasing, not increasing. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, then. perfect. So these need to get, these need to get regulation. online uh, with the previous uh, rules. And then I'm also updating because uh, you were making your way back to Montag. Uh, and so these prices actually are going to change because of your reputation. One second. All right. I was actually, I should have done this, but I got caught up with the changes of like all the downtime stuff today. I mean, we can do the purchasing next session if that makes it easier, since I know that the Giants were taking us to the Susparog to begin no, with. No, no, this is super easy to do. It's not hard to do. Um, I actually have these values written into my journal. I just have to transfer them. Over. I, was, so I didn't want I, I would I didn't just want say, to keep, like, two separate. But it's all, it's I, I all would done just now. say, while all the purchasing okay, is going on, on, Pip, pick up the health potions that you're doing already. Lance, I think you probably pick up whatever crafting stuff we may need. Um, I mean, I, we got a shit ton of, of gold and, and platinum now, plus silver we need to get rid of. And then uh, if there's anything else anybody wants to bring to the table as far as purchase, um, you know, I don't know if we want another belt or for Donlin. Um, you know, uh, up to the group here, but we have, we have yeah, plenty. Yeah. I mean, Donald, do you have room for the belt with the attunements and everything? I don't know if it's even attuned. Well, yeah, I don't use range weapons, so I don't. I'm sorry? I don't have belts. I said I don't use range weapons, so I don't have a belt. Belt slots are like quivers, cases, belts. Oh, like oh, I see. You can either have a belt or a quiver case. Yeah, so, so I guess. So, yeah, this is, the, this is the biggest change. It's something I'm working with the groups. It's it's a, a little bit of saying, hey, you have to have your quiver or your case equipped to your belt to use ammunition or grenades. So if you're going to be firing a bow, you can't also toss grenades at the same time because you're using ammunition for your bow mm -hmm. or your sling, right? So you either have to equip right that onto another thing or you have to share the quiver or the case with your grenades, right? Um, and we're never going to really come into a problem with like, uh, you know, do I have enough ammunition or whatever? I'm not going to employ that. I'm not going to do that. It's just really saying I have to have my belt used for my ammunition. So just be aware of that. So what uh, Deuce is saying is this character, John Lynn, uh, you know, belt is available, right? Because they don't use any sort of... Uh, Think about how many more weapons you could store there. Yeah, so, so there's three of them in a combat. So you just mount them. So it's uh, <laughs> is the translation translation right? It's ten, ten silver for one gold. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's correct. So we can almost, with all the silver and all the gold we have, almost pick up that belt of frost giant strength. We have to dip we in. See three thousand platinum, well, gold worth of platinum. Yeah, we have to dip so in a little bit. Into, uh, well, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get rid of weight. Uh, so if, we, we with the gold and the silver right now we have twenty seven six fifty. That would be all the gold, obviously, and all of the silver. It would be twenty seven six fifty. So we'd owe like another what fourteen hundred, give or take, worth of. I mean, I like. I don't know. I've got I've got half of that difference on me. Seven hundred eighteen gold. Well, we still have well, platinum we have that we platinum. can take out of the group. We have, oh, yeah, true. Plenty of money. Yeah, we've got so, thirty thousand gold with the platinum or some shit. Yeah, so so my vote would be three thousand gold worth of platinum. <laughs> yeah, that. So so my vote would be <laughs> if Donlin thinks the belt would be useful, we go ahead and pick it up here for him. But that that's just one vote. It's obviously up for the group. So. That, just so the group understands, that would spend all of our gold uh, that we currently have in the inventory, all of our silver, 
barely touched the platinum, so we, we would still have quite a bit of money to spend. I mean, that's fine if that's what y'all want to do. Also, I'm going to be trading with y'all. Y'all want me to just give you... Because I got five greater potions and ten healing. I was going to give two potions to each one and then one greater potion to everyone. Should I just do that? Yeah. Seems reasonable. I mean, I don't need a greater. Just give me two regular for now. Give another greater mm -hmm. to Don. Greater when we get hit. Yeah. Okay, I'll give or, all or, the two then. Or Kanan. Uh, Lance, how do you feel about the belt of frost giant strength for Donlin? Yeah, send it. I mean, he already hits hard, so make him hit harder. Make him yeah. miss less. And <laughs> more. Miss less. Yeah. Damn. All right. So, uh, missing part that everyone's concerned with. Um, all right. Uh, Deuce, I don't know if you can do that from where you're at now. Uh, do you want to? Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know how you want to do it. Buy silver. Buy gold. No, you buy the belt for him. You, just so you should you should be able to take just take the currency out of the group sheet into your own sheet and then you can purchase it. It should be smart enough to calculate uh, even if you put the silver in and the gold in, it'll it'll convert it as far as uh, what I know. So um, you can do that, or I can simply just put it into your inventory and reduce for you. So. I think he's doing it because it disappeared from the group. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, the group can, funds. I actually see all uh, changes in your sheets for currency, so I'm seeing. I it right see now. all. Shit, I'll take out that extra. Yeah, so if, if you change, by the way, in. if you change, my, I could see it. I also <laughs> could see when you change your prepared spells in combat. So just FYI. <laughs> yeah, um, not, not even that smart that would happen. To do that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I do it all, all right. the time. Belt's been bought. Yeah, because you have spells. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me make sure that the attunement is off for the belts. I mean, this, the, for go. everything we just bought, it's not bad that we're sitting at like 62,000 gold pieces still. You killed a dragon! A horde! It's what you got! I know. So nice. Look at that. Mm. Supreme role. You declined my okay. offer to trade, so, David? Rude. The reason why I have this really. Uh, Sorry. You know, this this miraculous thing happening while you're negotiating your trades here and exchanging potions or buying the belt and the giant's wood is there is a lot of things changing here you get into monsag and immediately you notice there are a little bit of fires maybe burning in some houses and these long cabins that they've built these very permanent large massive structures that they reside in some of them are on fire some have war parties that are coming out painted in kind of different paint individuals who have returned faster than you have and they've taken the advantage to asunder and plunder those that they would deem their enemy and as you come in here you're kind of walking looking left and right they kind of come after us but no no they look towards you and through their braid and some of the blood still stained, they actually look towards you and they kneel, clasping the hand towards the chest and standing up and continuing on their way to their various place in Monsag where they unite themselves in the various clan that they have enacted with, right, to do this deed. The giants that you're coming in with are just now taking that in, speaking to it, looking towards the others that this grievance has been given to that clan. And they're like looking at each other and you can see that little moment where do we fight or do we not? And they take that moment, it's done, is done. And they just move off. So now everyone's separated to their various places. Mm -hmm. There's still unity, trade, in this place is paramount and something that will withstand time no matter the clans fighting no matter everything there's still people still giants that are clanless there's still traders that have plunders of various loots from other raids that are willing to sell trinkets they look towards you and they offer their value and their prices and significant deductions that's why i reduced it because they see you you slayed the dragon you're the smallings you helped 
Nimsa. You allowed all of these giants to go to the halls of Thrym, finally, after thousands of years. And for that, you may buy my wares. Please wear them. Do battle in them. Compensate me in the slightest. And so they've reduced the prices of their wear so you can wear these things and wear them into battle to slay more dragons. They also want to hear tales. You're telling of how you slay the dragon, various other things. They want to hear that. They want to know about it, right? And they take that and they're writing it down in giant runes, chiseling it or carving it into wood. Some rare and few between writing it onto paper. The blacksmith, Kolvar. It's actually on the way in. Remember, you're coming in from the east, heading west. So when you come to the Giant's Wood, it's in the various woods and surrounding throughout this place, all these traders. Uh, even though the actual journal icon is placed in the way it is, you actually can attend to these traders really pretty much anywhere in Monsag as they trade uh, uh, throughout. Um, but the forge is hot, smeltering. Many giants stand outside requesting things motioning by because you actually have to pass this place uh on the northern end to get in uh through uh the various places so you can see this right and you know kolvog is still alive because you see kolv in thrall of the people putting their hands from left to right taking the orders they are a creature who is born of thrym they are in service and they will exist until they are defeated and so they continue to create magical items and things. No matter what clan, they do not care. And so they're taking these things, and some of them are holding parts of the dragonlings. Make this into something for me, Kolvog. Kolvog takes tells them that they will. And you can engage with Kolvog if you wish, but it sounds like we're headed to the Seussbrug first after we do this trade. Is that what I'm hearing? That seems like a wise idea, given everything that's going on. Okay. <clears throat> so we get on to opposite side. We cross through uh, Nimsong, which is in description of the long bridge covered bridge that extends over that ale house right that meadery for drinking and enjoying and uh, relishing not exactly full not a lot of giants in there just enjoying themselves of drink but as you pass through nimsong those who spent some time with the breakfast club since we're going to call them that they are actually in there drinking their table more than welcome to interact with them if you wish. They just raise the ale horn towards you as you come by, across the long scaffold of the rope bridge of the frozen river. Uh, you don't need to interact with them if you don't wish, but they are alive and well. Then, across you over that point, you get into the western side of this community, Monsag. Uh, we come to uh, the long cabin, this place where the Susbrog lies. Uh, with the covering over of the frontal area, right, as they had kind of discussed prior. I won't go through the descriptions of, of the place. I've gone through it a couple times. Um, you see that the Susbrog is actually uh, creating a pyre of some kind uh, out of wood and other sorts of vegetation. These different herbs and remedies are kind of creating something. It's not in the realms of a large funeral pyre, but it's definitely grand in terms of your size. And they're just creating things as they're throwing reagents in. And they're also moving the snow and the ice around from the around the pyre, creating a giant's rune of some kind as they're working with a broom-like th- object. And the ravens are actually perched on that awning, right, that covering. They're kind of like looking down upon it. The Seuss Brog is just continuous to work. It turns their head towards as you begin to approach. lower themselves down and a bow and they kind of falter down into a knee (laughs) 
trying to figure out the logistics, but Kanan will sort of like reach under her chin and sort of just push her up. He's like, there's no need for that from you. We have returned victorious. It is my duty as Susbrog. You are dragon slayers. And it is by my blood I must service you in all of your desires. Don't you already do that for him? Looks towards you and the eyes glow blue. My pleasantries on this plane are of my own will. This I offer to you as law of thrill. Bound by duty I am. I must enact. How are things? I notice there seems to be a bit of fighting going on. Not as much as I had feared. Many giants have fell to the thrall of Ethrin. Some have came back to Monsag, and they have fell into their ways, as most giants will, uniting back with their clans, fighting petty squabbles of conflict. War breathes in giant kind, and they must exhale that breath. What you see here or small raids. Not for plunder, but of position. They seek to remove before the reinforcements from the front lines arrive, from the valley. Your party that has arrived sees a raven frolics to the shoulder and they begin to look towards the eyes getting information from the raven. They are a number. And they will add to the security of the clans to make no moves against each other. But before they arrived, and like so many others, with so few, they took advantage. It is of no quar or qual. It is the way of giants. And those who have been killed or defeated still die, live eternal life in the halls of thrill. The deaths would have served greater purpose towards some other end than fighting amongst themselves, though. As within in that, our conversations. We agree. I'm hoping perhaps now that Nimsong has been lifted dragon has been slain, that perhaps we can find a way to reunite all the Jarls, put them to better purpose. Wayne Gunson said they didn't want to fight. They also said they'd be willing to kill more dragons. Also, they might like a better be purpose. willing to help us uh, fight the fire giant because uh, you know, they kind of forsaken them. There's a lot of options for it. There is two that you need to convince them. The first, you will have to have motive to move them to unite. What united them before was Nimsaw, a pact not just of life to slay dragon, but of purpose to slay dragon. A pact that meant there were many, a number that could not be foreseen. In this, they needed to bond. The motive must be strong. If there are other dra- uh, there, if there are other dragons to slay, then the motive will be strong. The giants will move. Second, they will need to have the advantage. No giant will march unless they know for certain that victory can be met. The laws of Thrym, dying for 
honor and glory is of the utmost parent, but there are also hidden laws within them that speak the mind. One cannot just simply kill a dragon, but must do so. Cunning, vigor, tactics. The giants will not move unless your plan is sound and they see victory at the end of that plan. You must come with something, and I, as Susfrog, can deliver it if you wish. I can have a meeting brought with the Jarls. Tolvar, the forger, can do the same. We are born of Thrym. I, Susfrog, am alone. My sister's gone. Tolvog is alone. The forger's gone. We can be voices for you. For you have slain a dragon and have earned utmost glory and honor to Thrym. We are bound to serve you. Uh, about this thing about can't you should get I was yes. getting to that. Yes, so I'm, I'm all, <laughs> I believe there's a few things we need to take care of first. Um, but that is our goal. Um, in the course of the battle with the dragon, I managed to capture its soul. I have since learned that that is counter to the ways of Thrym. So I was hoping you could help me discern a way to release it back into its natural destination. Motions for the fire. Sit for a moment, if you will. Sure. Goes back into the house, comes with a basket wool. Begins to move sage moss across it then begins to light the fire. Okay, now hop it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Giants. Like all creatures, require a seed. same magic that I would invoke to bring about the wolves to you. It's the same that is what was required of giants to be born. It is not that we need this magic to make love and to bear children. But it is what the god Thrym demands to ensure our strength and vigor are paramount. This giant magic, like other magics, fires begin to change with vision and other sorts of details that accent the story. It's pulled from chaos of the world around us. Feed as our God about all of the energies of this place. Dragons are creatures that seem surface to have great chaos. Giant kind and Thrym knows them as well. They continue to build chaos and grow. They are power incarnate. It is what Thrym hungers and feasts for. It is what giants seek to end. Or in just like 
the god of Thrym demands, and other gods in this world demand. It's balance. Giants are the answer. The growth and the power that never ends of dragons. In order us to balance, we must use that energy, that power, to bolster our own. What if, is there a way for us to use the soul of this dragon? You mentioned that you and Kovag are alone. Could we make another? Could you bear a child? And it is possible. This magic? I could bear a child. I would feast on the soul of this dragon. I would use its energy. If Thrym allows it. And I will bear another. I would offer it to you. I can't speak for the will of Thrym, but... That seems like a prudent cost of action. See as they look towards the fire. Looking at it. They grab the raven off the shoulder. They hold it clutch into the hand. Begin to move the hands in the direction of Raven's face. He flies off. And as they retreat back to the cabin to come back, various other reagents they're throwing onto the fire. Raven returns. A large ram supple hardened with muscle, grabs the ram by the horn, pulls a dagger in the back of frost and ice and steel, slices its throat, uses the blood to coat itself, throw the ram under the pyre. The raven flies back to the awning with the rest of the flock. They begin to chant giant direction of the fire and do some dancing around as you're sitting or standing around watching and witnessing. They falter to the knees and sway from side to side as an answer is given to them. Then they stand up covered in blood from the ram, hands outstretched. I have heard the words of Thrym. By born I am, and born I shall another. I shall give birth to another Suspa. Kanan will take out the staff and offer it to her and attempt to channel the spirit to her release it to her however he still has a very mild understanding of how this thing works mild understanding you understand to invoke the runes to send out the spirit to conjure that creature that you observe and your filter you're, you're kind of going okay i gotta do something similar to that you're trying to meet halfway what i need from you uh is to roll a religion or a kind check Oh, hot. Man, you barely rolled. You oh, rolled hot, regardless. <laughs> you do. You grab the the, the staff and you look towards the runes, and you begin to call upon them in the language of abyssal, right? And you're speaking to it, and as you do that, you're focusing the spirit and you're channeling it in a way that would manifest its out into the ether. And as you do that, you can see the Susbrog is chanting as well, not in the language of Abyssal, but that of Giant. 
and continuing to motion for those who can speak giant to motion for the implantation seed and as you release the spirit out you can hear the cry and the scream of Etherin within your ears and your mind Canaan and that little bit is just kind of a pleasantry to you just a little bit of a smirk overcome right you hear the tormented soul being released and you know it's been born by hellfire and as it comes outwards the energy around begins to funnel into the pyre and cyclone frost that's now turned to water and heat and that cycle of energy is transformed the fire completely dies and ends as it's exhausted extinguished Seuss Brog falters down to the knee, continues to sway from left to right. And all of you have been witness of this, this strange ritual, strange custom of the giant people. Donlin, you've never seen anything like this. Even though you lived so long amongst giant kind, none of them would do anything like this and being born of Thrym would never do anything in front of a slave, let alone speak to you. You see the Seuss Brog begin to walk over to you after stating the pyre has died, and the wind howling slightly dies down with it. The snow softly falling down lowers the hand towards you, Canaan. Reach out and take it. I have last laid with you the child I carry within me will be part of you I am greatly honored customs of my people you would be a father I do not hold you to any law, custom, or tradition that would hold you as a father. I will not hold you here in this place, and I will raise this child as my own, and I will speak tales of you and your victory against Ethan, spawn of Javari, and your companion. They will learn the tales told that they are born of Thrym, the tales told that they are your child. They are invigorated me, the death of Ethan. You do me great honor. I do hope that if we can unite the clans under one banner to fight the giants, that you would continue to advise be at my side whenever we find ourselves in such a situation of course I will not just bound but also a free will he's gonna pull her down or, you know gently hmm. suggest that she bend down since he does honestly with the belt he might could give her a good tug um, and, and give her a kiss give her a kiss she gives you a kiss also even as your smalling self does not grow you to size. <clears throat> On that note, I believe the second item that we need to take care of in the path to reuniting the giants is to perform the wolf ritual. I do not believe that we could be considered worthy of uniting your people without the ability to summon the wolves. Of course will hinder are necessary for all dragon slayers, and it will be worn as a badge of honor. Carry them into any meeting. It is of war paint any giant would wear to battle. I must tell you that anything that you bring to me any part of the dragon 
I will need to consume most of it to do this ritual. But will bear to you, each of you, will bear a Vuhinder. One will be leader of this pack, but they will all speak to you as master. Certainly seems like a reasonable trade to me. We'll say the rest of you. Donald's just nodding while he's just fucking getting drunk in the corner somewhere. <laughs> just fucking drinking, mm. going, well, he's having a baby. We're making wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Donald's just like, yeah, all of this. The dragon spirit's been returned. We're making wolves. Yeah, I'm here for all of this. Yep, party above so. Much as I. So, OC, this is OC now, because uh, I'm going to talk about the mechanics of this. Um, you have yielded uh, a certain amount of materials uh, from the dragon, okay? So, what you have yielded is eight total blood and of hide, okay? Those could be used for crafting recipes. They are going to take six of each of those. You will be left with two. So, they're going to take most of them. You're going to be left with only two ampules of dragon's blood, fine. And only two of the hide fine. They're going to take six of each. And they're going to use that and to cultivate and make for you, each of you, one of these wolves. And that's going to be a summonable thing that is with you at all times. They can perish. It's like a mount, right? They can die. Uh, they're not just going to be mortal. already gone. Right? So mine's clearly so, got to be the leader, so it gets extra hit points. And and, uh, <laughs> and this this is this is all or nothing. This is not a descalable thing. This is a pack that they're making. This is part of the of the ritual. They make a pack, and then from there they make more wolves over time. But for you all, right? It's just the one. I mean, I'm down as long as everyone else is playing. I mean, a, a wolf companion. That's that's pretty dope. Not as cool as a dragon, but wolves are pretty dope. It's made of dragon's blood. Yeah, they're, they're also like large to enough to ride. They're immune to cold. They move at like double speed on snow. <laughs> but keep in mind, we are going against fire, I believe, next. <laughs> well, we don't have uh, to ride it into battle. I, I can I can and, and sweeten the pot a little bit. Uh, they are uh, based on a uh, winter wolf uh, is what the, they uh based on. Um, and so they are a challenging three creature. They have 75 hit points a piece. Um, they're like a wolf where they bite, they can knock more prone. Have. They have a cold breath that recharges, uh, deals more, more than than cold have. damage, they're immune to cold. They have ice uh, climbing, have. like ice walk, no camouflage. So, you know, they're bringing it into a city. But but un, well, unlike yeah, maybe uh, don't ride it through the gate. But yeah, uh, I mean, but if we like to Caden's point, if we use them as like quote unquote mounts, we left them outside. They're not tied up. They're not going to succumb to a regular beast. They could fight for themselves in a pack and yeah. defend themselves. Yeah, we like, just let them loose. But like, hey, come back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm I, assuming we'll get the thing to like call them to summon them. Yeah. Yeah. True. There's not a visa more for travel than let them do their own thing, so they're not fighting dragons and stuff to lose them. I mean, that makes sense. I, I, I'm game for it, but I mean, I mean, I'm definitely game for it. Like that's, I'm all. I mean, I'm also not a not a crafter, so I don't know how much this hurts crafting of anything. Yeah, it says so down to Lance. You're the one who would make a bunch of shit out of the shit. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is because we had already killed a couple of the smaller wormlings and had gotten some fine hide of dragon scale, whatever, we actually had enough to trade for an exquisite, which would allow us to make some very rare items off the crafting table, which are pretty with, powerful. With Ethrin's stuff that we just got? With Ethrin's stuff that we just got. So. We could also buy more fine. There was some in the shop. I don't know how much there was. Yeah, so it's it's a trade off of how much do you value a single time mount versus a potentially permanent magic item of choice. Single time? Well, can we just keep calling them back until they die? Well, yeah. until they die is what I mean. Like, I mean, I mean they have more HP than everyone in the party. Yeah, they're tankier than we are. Is the thing. I mean, but yeah, they yeah. have like they have like twenty more hit points okay. than I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> in, 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 
in case you're wondering, ample dragon blood to find. There's ten in the shop for a hundred gold piece. There's okay. no hide. Yeah, so there there is a, there is quite a bit of materials in the shop. Um, you know, in terms of the giant's wood, they're willing. You know, giant parts and dragonlings, all of that stuff is coming back to the traders. They're going to resell that that sort of thing. I think what's important here is that it is a sacrifice. You do have to realize that you're losing materials. Uh, you know, dragon parts and dragon blood. Right, these are world bosses. They're kind of hard to come by. Um, but the the Volhinder, which are the you know the winter wolves that are homebrewed here, um, they are they are powerful and each of you will have control of it you will be the master of it you can use them as mounts uh you can summon them down right uh you know and uh, just like any war horse would um and that's up to you i mean if you find value in that versus enchantments uh to power yourself uh yeah so i think i got uh you know i think david you're the only one who's saying may maybe not because we can get the the powerful enchantment right if we keep it yeah there. yeah yeah my, my only thought is you can get a horse anywhere and if you're not using these in combat are you really benefiting from all those fancy stats and health and whatnot compared to a horse yeah i mean you could use them in combat i probably wouldn't take them into a dragon fight but anything else they'd probably be perfectly fine I'm mm. okay Do okay well then it sounds like that's the move and it's four to one so we say donate the stuff Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh. As we agree, David, uh, Lance, right? You're, so you're, you're giving it up. You're saying, you know, with the yep. party, yep. they have something of value. This is a, a good learning point, I think, for the party as well, right? Lance here being a craft uh, character, uh, holding on to these materials, seeing the value of them, willing to... Uh, give them up for the rest of the, the party's uh, need uh, for the wolves, seeing that, you know, we can do this together, right? I think it's a, definitely a stepping stone for all of the party to come together at that point and be like, you know what? We can come together no matter what. <laughs> we can get materials out end of that of guy's hand. And right. then, yeah, end of the day. Crafting my hands out of him. Yeah. Um, so the Seuss Brog is going to take these materials from you. Uh, and it's going to use the same pyre and begin to rebuild uh, some of them, throwing other reagents onto this pyre. And from there, it's actually not going to light any fire. Is that is going to demand sacrifice from other animals as they bring them to the thrall, mainly goats and rams, right? Simple animals, bleeding that blood onto it. They then take the dragon's blood, mixing that in. They then take the same dagger. And they begin to cut themselves the giant's blood into this pyre. And as they bleed the blood upon, there is a concoction that begins to be made and the frost begins to billow as they begin to come around and begin to move throughout. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep track of... Th I thought there were five items when I took stuff, but I got rid of half of the or six of the fine yeah blood and hide so far if there was anything else let me know and i'll no, give that's that's it so six six hide and six blood got it okay, okay. sorry to interrupt all good yeah you're totally fine Dave. um as you see that the intermixing the caution begins to form and from there you see as the seuss brog kind of looks towards the frost that's beginning to to billow and they're kind of reaching out as if they're kind of forming a connection to another plane and they're reaching into the frost and you see that there's this change almost like the space is kind of warping and they're kind of working themselves into the space their eyes are closed and they open the glowing blue and they look i have a soul one that wishes to fight for redemption one that fell in the battle that lie before but they ran they did not fight, and they were killed for it by other giants. Who wishes to take this soul? I'll, I'll take him. I'll pull them for you. As they pull the soul begin to move it in a working 
They move their hand as they do that. They hold this bluish energy in the frost of their hand and through the body of one of the goats point it and it begins to mutate and change into the Volga, the wolf that presents. And form that is Olas. The title given to Olas. <laughs> Olas the cowering. From each of these, they're bearing soul. The next hold forth. It's not one that cowered, was one that not marched at all. They didn't fight. And they actually drunk themselves to death. Yeah, that's a dominant soul right there for them. I, I was thinking it, but I was going to let you get there on your own. You take Toad Zog. <laughs> Toad Zog, the drunk. The next is one that did fight. But they did not slay a dragonling or a half giant. Nope. Instead, they tripped on an ice rock and they fell. Axe going into their own head, killing them instantly. That's impressive. You know what? Sure. Sure. We'll go there. I'll, t I'll, I'll take that one. You take Brunda. You're clumsy. Make a master craftsman out of you yet? The next <clears throat> is one that is filled with anger and lust, they turned on their own Jarl in the heat of battle. Facing half-giant and dragonling, they attempted to kill their own Jarl. Kanan will take that one. <laughs> You'll take that one? Yeah. Gotcha. They're known as Vluzgir, the betrayer. And who is last? Is this Pip? Pip. It's Pip. It's me. Is there one who fucked up and tried to do good? <laughs> Is it one of the Breakfast Club? Were they missing a member to reset? No, they, they were all there. <laughs> no, no, they didn't go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, these are all like dishonored giants. Like, none of them are going to be like, I did something cool because they're, they're yeah. all like in yeah. trouble. That's why they're doing yeah. this. Trying to make up their name, their soul. Let's see, what would Pip... Okay, yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, I got it. This is going to be good. He tried to talk to the wrong thing and got his whole party killed. <clears throat> so, Pip, your uh, last but not least soul that's pulled is not one uh, that necessarily did not... It's a, this is important. You're going to learn something here. It's not someone that necessarily did wrong did everything right they perished before their time they're one that had just recently died in one of the raids they're known as Iska the title is the child not someone who has faltered by any means but someone who has not had time and has met their end to It's kind of sad. It is sad. But you have now the gift to give them a way to do more in their life. And they are more than willing to do that. All right. 
I'm gonna go to copy this information, post it in the public chat. Oh, that comes across. It's kind of weird, but hey, it's all right. Copy it from my notepad. So we have Olas goes to Jax, the cowering. Odzog, the drunk, goes to Donlin. Runda goes to Lance, the clumsy. Luzgear, the betrayer, goes to Kanan. Izga, the child, goes to Pip. Those will be uh, the Ohuhinder. I will create them uh, as independent actors. Then I will give you ownership of those. Uh, and they will be, uh, I'll configure them to be writable as well. So they work with a module to be mounted. Um, <clears throat> they are what is now brought forth and into this realm from the interplace before they were getting to the Hall of Thrym. They have not achieved enough uh, to be able to get there. And they wish to serve you as masters to do that. We are a little bit past we started late. Is there anything anybody wishes to do before the end of our session? Uh, Zeus Brog is going to be performing this ritual for uh, a number of hours, uh, not hours, but number of minutes here, sorry. Um, and it's going to push us. I'll push us probably about like 152-ish on getting to here. Like going through the trading and then this ritual. This number of minutes. A lot of stuff has happened. In such a short amount of time. Um, but uh, part of this... Me. Yeah, so part of this is um, if there's anything that anybody wishes to craft or we can discuss downtime. So what I'm going to leave is uh, the end of sessions uh, to discuss downtime and crafting. Uh, and also in the beginning of session, if anybody wishes to craft, that way we can kind of, uh, you know, optimize the time a little bit. So we're not like crafting mid session and we can kind of like keep playing. Uh, so the end yep. of sessions, I want to kind of get to a point where everyone's OK, we're good. All right, let's talk about it. Do we want to stay in Monsag for a number of days to do some of the downtime activities? Do we just want to stay here for a couple of days to do crafts so we can make stuff? Um, and so now is kind of the time to think about that. Um, but uh, before we kind of do that, I do want to say, is there any role play that anybody wishes to do? Or is there any other actions that we kind of want to get to here uh, before we call the sesh? I think next major thing on the agenda is go to Kolvog and figure out what's up with the axe. We can do that next time. Next time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's one hanging hanging item with uh, being here in Monsog. Okay. Then, then we can call the... Well, we have to unite the giants first. Well, yeah, but we need yeah. the axe. Then we call the meeting, and we have the wolves. It's the whole package. I don't even think we need the axe. I think i just put down the fucking tankard and be like, yo, I'm Thrym's fucking champion. I need to just help until the fire giants. There's a baby. There's also a baby. I am so I, proud I of you. A man and a baby. Let's all, let's all give a, a round of applause for Caden. <laughs> Caden's a daddy. He really did giant it. cigars. He's yeah. And that's how you got Christianity. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Offer up the Holy Spirit. Out comes the Britain. Just kidding. All right. All right. We're going to end it there. We're going to end it there. Yeah. That's good. That's a good sound. I just, uh, just want to clarify real quick. It is Olas the Cowering, not Jax the Cowering. Just so we clarify that. No, okay. no, Olas <laughs> yeah. Jax, <laughs> Olas they all cowering. seem to represent the cowers. <laughs> totally kidding. Jax is a cower. So. <laughs> Jax does do that. <laughs> oh, no. He 100% would. With the hey, Brave Sir Robin. <laughs> run and hide boys run, run and, and hide, hide. <laughs> run and hide come on all right i'm gonna calculate experience points with the stream still on and then uh after i do that i'll get the stream off and then we'll talk about crafting and downtime okay it's gonna be one moment and uh sorry we can if i cut you off guard there yeah <laughs> 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 Sorry to make you sad. Sorry. I know, a little guy just died for his time. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how you look at stuff. Is maybe better than tripping and falling on your own axe? <laughs> <laughs> or, or being the guy that cowers and doesn't do anything and dies still? <laughs> yeah, I think the, the craziest part is Pip is going to have to try to get this child <laughs> And yeah. Oh, there's two children. Little baby wolf. Pip also gets a child. Look, it's a baby 
giant slash wolf thing? Would it be smaller than the other wolves? He did not we'll specify to... whose wolf was the leader of the pack, though. I not. think we should roll for it. That's that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to dictate which one. I will say I don't think the child would be the leader. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. It would be good though. <laughs> so I'll let you, if you guys want to roll it, then y'all can roll it. But I don't think the child would be the leader of a group. My vote is for the clumsy. Really, the, the betrayer right clearly can't get it because they have to follow somebody again to like do their whole redemption. They've already tried and failed once, so they need to do it again. All right. So for session nineteen, we have uh, eight hundred thirty-six experience each, but you had thirty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-four experience total. All right. So if you're yeah. watching the stream, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, I had a blast. Uh, a lot of things happened, uh, and not a very large amount of time in game so many little moments of just like you know come and find the jarls and and the loot and everything so uh these uh these wool hitters so uh yeah check us out next week fridays at 5 p.m pdt uh and see what happens next with these wolves and with the giants mm -hmm. and where the party mm -hmm. goes next so thanks so much and see you bye bye bye, bye chat <laughs>